It's been a pretty brutal morning from the early hours right up until now. The, 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 the main power of this storm, I think, has, has passed through, but the gusts are still pretty strong. And as you'd expect with something uh, like this, the damage uh, is widespread and will no doubt run into uh, many, probably hundreds of thousands, millions of pounds when you add it all up. Uh, we've seen roofs being blown off buildings, uh, trees falling onto vehicles uh, and, of course, trees all over the place coming down. We ourselves passed somebody, uh, some police officers who were uh, on guard, closed a road in case a tree fell down. Uh, these are all these sort of quite small events in some respects, but, of course, they add up to a very big picture indeed, and that is one of raw power and destruction uh, across much of the country today. Yeah, and Rupert, well, we can just see and hear the wind really picking up there where you are. But what's the disruption been as well with all this wind? Well, look, this is the, uh, the original Severn Bridge. It often closes when we get strong winds like this, but unusually they've closed both bridges uh, today that link England and Wales. That uh, they believe, Highways England say, they've never done that before. They had hoped that they would close, uh, sorry, reopen the M4, but the gusts of winds, as you've just witnessed here, are still very strong and haven't fallen below the threshold for reopening uh, these major arterial routes. So there is still an awful lot uh, of, of power that is being felt here that is affecting everything, all the transport routes, buses that in this part of the world won't run until four o'clock at the earliest this afternoon. The, the worst may have passed here, but it ain't over yet. All right, Rupert in South Gloucestershire, thank you. Well, in Wales, for the first time, the decision was taken to cancel all trains all day to prepare for storm Eunice. Dean Thomas Welsh is in Porthcawley in South Wales. Um, Dean, Wales was prepared for the storm in many respects then, but what's the impact been? Yeah, well, I'm in Porth Call, which is a traditional seaside town. People in coffee shops, people in restaurants, people buying ice creams at the seaside kiosk. But that's all changed today. It's been like a ghost town. People are listening to the warnings. They're staying indoors. They're staying safe. Just a few brave individuals making the trip uh, to the promenade to see the dramatic waves, which you may be able to see behind me. But across Wales, Storm Eunice has caused major disruption. There are around seven and a half thousand homes in South and Mid Wales without power. Western Power Distribution say that their engineers are working hard to try and return power to those homes. Large stretches of the M4 have also been closed. That's due to the high winds, but also due to a number of accidents, accidents that we've passed on the way to Porth Call today. And as you just heard, uh, the M4 Prince of Wales Bridge and the Severn Bridge have also been closed. But even before Storm Eunice hit, Local authorities across Wales took the decision to close schools and uh, rail and bus services have also been cancelled. Now, as you can see, the wind is incredibly strong and there were fears yesterday as Wales were put uh, in those red warnings that there would be uh, large uh, disruption and destruction. That thankfully hasn't happened yet, but as you can see, the wind speeds are incredibly still high and Wales remains in the eye of Storm Eunice. Dean, fourth call, thank you very much. Those dramatic scenes from the coastline there. And as we've been reporting, this is the first time a red weather warning has been issued in London and the South East. Well, Amy Lewis is in central London. Amy, very rare for the wind to be this strong in the capital. Yes, we've seen uh, warnings like this before along the coast and in other parts of the country, but never here in the capital. And of course, it's been taken so seriously because the capital is so highly populated and there are so many tall buildings. And in fact, when the wind speed picks up here uh, with those huge gusts of winds, it's uh, creating real strong wind tunnels and there's lots of debris already just passing by us. So there is that concern of danger to life. Now, it's a Friday lunchtime here in the capital uh, during half term. Normally you would expect it to be absolutely packed here outside the London Eye, but it is empty. So people are clearly listening to the warnings. And here is why. Take a look at these pictures. The Millennium Dome, or the O2 as it's now called, just a few miles away from here in Greenwich, has been shredded. There have been huge panels pulled off with the wind speeds of 80 to 90 miles per hour. And it just gives you some idea of what's happening here in the capital. It'll be calm and then all of a sudden with this huge gust 
gust of wind. So Sadiq Khan, the London mayor, telling people that unless they have to leave home, then to stay home where possible. Well, and we just saw the damage that's been done to the dome there. But what other kind of disruption are we seeing in London? Well, as you'd expect, lots of disruption to the railway lines and also to the flights. Uh, we've seen planes trying to land at Heathrow and either having to abort or in some cases managing to land, as you can see here. But the wind speed is just too strong and uh, they're wobbling to the left and right. Uh, many flights have been cancelled. Dozens more have been delayed. Many people have tried to get to work this morning, but actually now it's really picked up and we're in the peak of this storm. We're finding that many now are staying away. We've seen that the London Zoo is closed, the London uh, Eye behind me, and a lot of the Royal Parks. And that's because we are now in the peak of this storm. The Met Office say it would be between 10 o'clock this morning and 3 o'clock, and it may well be extended. OK, Amy, in central London, thank you. Well, while the south of the country has been hit by strong winds in the northeast, they are dealing with their second storm in a week. Let's get the latest from correspondents there. First to Greg Eastall in County Durham. Greg, how's it looking there? Lots of snow, I see. Well, pretty unpleasant here, as you can see right now. In truth, we haven't had the really bad winds and rain that's been seen further south over the last few hours. What we've had instead, though, is snow. Eunice delivering that from around 4.30 this morning, coming down pretty heavily over at Scotch Corner on the A1, where the gritters and snow ploughs are out trying to clear a path for motorists. The key A66 route nearby, collecting east to west. Well, that was shut down from midnight. Meanwhile, further north, up in places like Concert, early morning commuters were clearly having trouble getting going, sliding about on the roads there. And in addition to that, a number of drivers simply weren't going anywhere at all. We've seen a number of crashes, incidents and accidents and the like. Now, we've also seen pockets of school closures and in addition to that, pockets of power failures. But again, in truth, nothing on the scale of the problems that we've seen already with things like Storm Arwen and on and also Storm Malik. I imagine, unusually, a lot of northerners will be looking south at the moment and thinking to an extent that we're getting away from the worst of it. A warning, though, a yellow warning for rain here on Sunday and the possibility of flooding. It never seems to stop at the moment. All right, Greg and County Durham, thank you. Let's go to Scotland now, where heavy snow is also causing disruption on the roads and to travel. Lucy Watson is in Bancori in Aberdeenshire this lunchtime. Lucy, lots of snow there as well, clearly having an impact. Yes, Lou. I mean, this morning on my way here, it's taken me about three hours to get here, and I've never experienced driving conditions like it in the UK. In part, there were some roads that were completely impassable. I didn't even know which way the road was supposed to take me, let alone be able to take it. I've seen umpteen snowplows, farmers out with their huge snowplows, trying to clear the pathways, trying to clear the roads in and around their homes and their land. Also, gr gritters out, of course, out in force, also mini gritters out on the pavements, and so many cars just simply ground to a halt, stuck in the snow. They are used to heavy snowfall, of course, here in Aberdeenshire. It's, a, it's an annual winter event, but it was the speed with which it came down this morning. When I first woke up around 6.30, there wasn't a flake on the ground. This has all come down just this morning, since about 8 o'clock, and in some occasions, it's been almost blizzard-like. It seems to have calmed down a little bit, um, right now as we head towards lunchtime. But it has forced 100 schools in this area in Aberdeenshire to close power cuts in the areas of Fife and Jedburgh, some train and ferry cancellations. And there are still two yellow warnings in place in Scotland, one for flooding and wind in the south and one for snow here in the north. It is almost like a winter wonderland. It's picture perfect, but it is exceptionally dangerous.